So hello and welcome everybody uh, to our fourth Hungry for History. Um, this one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to do some time traveling. So you're going to meet some people that have come from the past. Uh, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Um, we're also going to play some games maybe. Um, they're all going to be safe. We're all going to stay away from each other. We're not going to touch the same stuff. Um, but it will still be fun, I hope. Um, so if you'd like to uh, know, um, know the schedule for the rest of these events, we have flyers back there in the back. Um, there's another kid-themed one coming up in August, uh, so look out for that. Um, we also have a sign-up sheet in the back if you'd like to leave your email address to have us let you know um, if we need to cancel because of weather, because we do have to be outside. Um, so with that, I'll give you the talking kids. Hello and welcome to everyone. I'm Dora Cockaine. This is my younger sister, Irina, and my younger brother, Samuel Alexander, but we call him Sam. We all grew up in this big farmhouse and we'd like to share with you what life is like for us and some of the fun games we like to play. For us, the year is 1884. I'm 14 years old, Irina is 12, and Zan is 10. Our father, Samuel Andrew Jackson Cockaine, owns this farm. We call it Leehurst Farm. His land goes all the way up onto the hillside, all the way down to the river, and all the way south to my Uncle Vincent's farm down the road. We love to go down to their farm to play with our cousins, Carrie and Emily. We raise lots of different animals and crops on the farm. My father is known across the whole world for the merino sheep that we raise here. Merino sheep are a special kind that grow a very soft wool. He even won a prize for his wool at the big World's Fair they had in Philadelphia to celebrate our country's 100th birthday. We still have the medal and certificate that he won. But we raise other things too. We have special breeds of pigs as well, and chickens and cows and horses. Father's been experimenting with growing new kinds of wheat too, and the hillsides are cut for timber. For such a big farm, there's lots of chores to do every day. The boys help feed the chickens and collect the eggs. I help my dad bring home the cows, collect, collect the wheat, and plow the fields and collect the hay. And then I'm, one day I'm going to run this farm, so I have to learn everything about it. My dad is a well-known man in this community, and I want to be just like that when I grow up. Except for I plan on going into politics when I'm older. After we do our chores in the morning, we all walk to school. It's a one-room schoolhouse with all the children from all the grades in one room. It can get pretty noisy, but it's fun to see our friends every day. Sometimes, after school sometimes, we get together to play games. We like lots of outside games. Sometimes we play badminton or lawn tennis. Other times we play tag or blind bluff. When the weather is bad, we amuse ourselves inside. There are plenty of games you can play inside. We really like a game called Authors. Maybe some of you have played something like it. It's a card game where you have to collect four cards with the titles of books written by the same author. We also like other kinds of games called parlor games. Has anyone ever played charades? That's one that we like. But my favorite is called Throwing the Smile. Is there anybody who would like to try playing Throwing the Smile? Any kids? Anybody? It's really fun. So if anybody who wants to play it can come to the front and I'll explain. And adults, adults are welcome to play too. All right, so anybody can join before we start. So we all stand in a circle and one person is it. Then that person has to smile at everyone, but everyone else has to have a blank face. Then it takes their smile, wipes it off, and throws it to someone else. Then that person has to catch it, put it on, and smile at everyone until that person wipes it off and takes a different person to throw it to. And anyone who smiles when they are not it is out. 
Is there anybody else who wants to play before we start? All right. Stand on. We also like to play games like, like Jackson and Marbles. To play Marbles, you go so far the door and make a cross pattern. And then with these things come up. And then, and then you put the big marble right here, and then you and then you flick it, and whoever knocks the most out, it's the winner. Does anyone want to play? How about you just, just, just demonstrate? Just show it. All right, now jacks are a little different. You have 10 jacks and one ball. You scatter the jacks on the ground or on the table, and then you have to pick up one jack each time you bounce the ball. You start with onesies. <laughs> I'll try it again. You start with onesies, which means you have to pick up one jack each time you bounce the ball, and then you play twosies, then threesies, all the way up until tensies. If you drop the ball or pick up the wrong number of jacks, it's the other player's turn. And whoever gets the tensies first wins. I obviously am very bad at jacks, so I will not be demonstrating this any further. <laughs> okay. We love to play games like this with our friends. When our friends are busy, though, we play different sorts of things for fun. I love to draw and paint. I like to make funny sketches of my sisters or our animals on the farm. Dora likes to write stories and poems. Sometimes she writes plays that we put on with our friends. Some of them are really funny. We like to read lots of books, too. There are always plenty to keep us busy. When we're bored of all that, we might practice our sewing. Though sewing is more often something that girls do, everyone needs to know a few basic stitches. This is a sampler that I made. A sampler is a piece that lets you practice with unique stitches and shows people that you are a good seamstress. How about Irina teaches you a few really simple stitches to get you started on making your own sampler. We have some packets for anybody who wants to try. And you can even watch from the audience so you don't have to come up front. There's two over here, Kara.
So you will see your paper plate and take your paper plate out. Wait, don't throw the needle yet. So you will see two rows of holes on your paper plate. We are going to start with the ones closest to the edge. So the first thing you need to do is threading your needle. So you take your needle that's made with a pipe cleaner and you put your yarn through it. With the knot on the other end, the end with the knot on it should be at the end. All right, so once you have that done, you will put your needle up through one of the holes on the edge from the bottom of the plate. Like Irene is doing, yeah. So you pull it through, not completely, but there should be some hanging out at the bottom so that it doesn't come out. So then you move to the hole right next to it and go in from the top. And then you repeat those steps going in the same direction, whichever way you picked and go up again from the bottom. So once you have that stitch done, I have to cut my needle again. You go up again from the hole next to your stitch, from the bottom. Then you move again to the hole next to it from the top. And you just repeat this all the way around the plate, going up and coming back down. And this stitch is called a running stitch. It should look like it should look like this at the end. All right. Looks like everybody's about done. So I'll teach you. <laughs> I'll teach you another stitch um, called a back stitch. Take your um, the other yarn out of your needle. So you're going to pick one of the holes in your middle row and go up again from the bottom, going up. And 
this time you don't go forward. So then you actually, you go forward, one. So it looks like the running stitch, but instead of continuing this pattern, you come up from the hole next to it. So it should look like this. But instead of going forward again, you come back to this hole and put it through. And then this repeats again. You put it, you come up through this hole. And come back again through the one before it. I have one more stitch. So when it's done, it should look something like this. And for those of you who have these sewn projects, um, there's a Sharpie up here and you can come up afterwards and write your initial on the bag so you can take them home. All right, has anybody ever been through our house here? If you have, you might have noticed some things that are different from yours. Some big cities have electricity now, but we don't have it yet. So that means that kerosene lamps and candles are our only light at night. It can get pretty dark in the evening, especially in the winter. The house doesn't have running water either. So bringing in water is one of the chores we have to do every day. We all keep a pitcher of water in our bedrooms and pour some out in a bowl to wash ourselves with in the morning. But when we take a full bath, we have to carry a lot of water. We also don't have bathrooms inside, so we, so we have outhouses over there where those rocks are. We also have a chamber pot like this one underneath our beds at night because there's no way I'm going outside to use the bathroom in winter. That's enough about outhouses. We also like to play music. I play the guitar and the flute, and Irina plays the violin and mandolin, and she sings really well. Our older sister Sally plays the banjo, and our mother plays the piano. Sometimes we all like to play and sing together. This is a song I've been working on.
Thank you. So what do you think? Would you like to grow up with those coffee cane kids? Now, does anybody have any questions that about things we haven't talked about yet? Okay. So we hope you enjoyed seeing what it would be like to grow up in the past. Thank you, everybody, for coming.